CBS Sports and the St. Louis Sports Commission and National Sportsmanship Foundation present a celebration of class and character. Honoring the great one, Wayne Gretzky, National Spelling Bee Champion Zayla Avant-Garde, Major League Baseball's National League MVP Bryce Harper, and those who show extraordinary sportsmanship. From the historic Stiefel Theater in St. Louis, it's the 2021 Musial Awards presented by Maryville University. Now, Mike Bush. Welcome to the Musial Awards, a celebration of the year's greatest moments of sportsmanship and those in sports who embody class and character. We come to you from St. Louis, where Stan Musial made his mark as one of baseball's greatest players. These awards bear his name not just because of his on-field excellence, but for how he played the game and the way he treated others. Stan the Man's legacy lives on as we honor those who inspire us through their extraordinary sportsmanship. We begin by recognizing a high school football player from Iowa who represents what the musical awards are all about. No matter what happens the rest of the week, it never seems to dull the shine of Friday Night Lights. That's certainly true here in Charles City, Iowa, even though their soybean season is usually more successful than their football season. This program has struggled throughout uh, the last probably 10 years or so. But new coach Brian Bjorklund is trying to turn things around with help from star players like 18-year-old Mario Hofer. He's a fun guy to coach. He's active, he's energetic. <laughs> but while winning isn't everything, it is something to Mario, especially going into his senior season. Last year, it was my junior year and we lost every game. This year though, the Comets began the season with a victory. And the next game on the schedule was an arch rival. <laughs> New Hampton High School is about 20 miles and 20 minutes from Charles City, but their football achievements are a world away. Let's go boys. We've been in the state playoffs uh, of those 29 years 18 times. So one state championship. And for players like Carter Steinlogge, losing to Charles City is not an option. We play them every year in every sport, so it's just a big thing for us. As soon as this year's game started, it was clear that New Hampton was playing a new Charles City. It was a close game. It was a one touchdown game. Because it was a hot night and because Mario was playing almost every down, he started experiencing cramps. Mario Hofer. It just feels like somebody grabbing like your like a muscle and just squeezing it as hard as they can. He powered through, but in the fourth quarter of a one-score game, his head coach was trying to set his defense, but couldn't find Mario. From the head side, I'm like, where's Mario? Where's Mario? Where's Mario? <laughs> Mario was defending on the previous play. I ran like a 10-yard curl and he threw it and I jumped up to go get it and it went over me and I landed and I felt, I instantly felt my calf start to cramp. I get cramps a lot, but that was the worst cramp I've ever had. Moments later, a parent in the stands snapped this picture. Knowing how painful a leg cramp can be, Mario couldn't stand around and watch Carter struggle. Why did you go over there to help him? I feel like it's better to have your opponent at their best because that just makes you look better. And I was like, wow, this is, this is good because then I don't have to sit here and yell and sit here helpless almost. Neither player thought much of it. In fact, Mario was far more excited about this. Late in the fourth quarter, he made the catch for what turned out to be the game-winning touchdown and Charles City finally beat New Hampton 14 to eight. An upset like that would normally be big news around here, but the talk of the town was this picture. It went viral. 
Why did it resonate with people, do you think? I think the main reason is real and um, pure, and it's in the moment action shot. It's not staged. I know he'd do that for anyone, even if it wasn't just me. That's just the way he is. To help recognize Mario, we're pleased to have with us from New Hampton, Iowa, Carter Steinlage. And accepting the musical from Charles City, Mario Hofer. So I think one of the interesting things about this is you guys had no idea this was going to catch fire. You just did it in the moment and it was over. When did you realize this thing kind of took off? Well, I was just scrolling on Instagram and Facebook. I don't usually go on Facebook. I'm young. Uh, <laughs> but I, I know it got shared around by like a lot of parents and like one day I'm just like, okay, yeah, it's going to go away. I mean. This was nothing. Next day, oh, this person liked it. Oh, this person's verified. It just kept getting shared around in us, and I was like, whoa. So it was just a moment on a football field. What do you hope the message is from a moment like that? That kids have seen it, and it makes them want to have a chain reaction towards it and just always have positivity, no matter if you're the best player on the field or if you're not. Just do something that you would do even if nobody was looking. Carter, thanks for being here. Mario, congratulations. So we go from a player helping his opponent to an entire fan base getting behind a star quarterback on the opposing sideline. In January, Buffalo Bills fans showed amazing class and generosity, making them most deserving of a Musial Award. Buffalo, New York is best known for two seasons, winter, and football. And what connects Buffalonians even more than blizzards and chicken wings are the Buffalo Bills. Let's go, Buffalo! Let's go, Buffalo! And now the franchise that once lost four Super Bowls in a row has turned decades of heartbreak into hope. Last year was the most exciting Bill season I've ever witnessed in my life. The Bills made it all the way to the AFC Championship for the first time in a generation. But along the way, a moment that defied explanation. In the second round of the playoffs, the Bills were leading Baltimore 17 to three in the third quarter. And there was just this sudden turn, one play that went awry, Lamar goes down, stays down. Never want to see that any side of the ball. Lamar is Lamar Jackson. He doesn't play for the Bills. He's Baltimore's quarterback. But the first thing I thought was, that's not what we want. We want to do this fair and square. Jackson was done for the day, and the Bills won the day. But on this occasion of pure happiness, a startling moment of kindness. I wanted to, to keep the good momentum going, keep the good karma going. So Dan Konopsky Googled Lamar Jackson's favorite charity, and just before going to bed, he made a $25 donation. And at almost the exact same time, Will Burke had the same idea. He didn't know Dan then, but they both posted their donations online, urging other Bills fans to join in. And boy, did they join in. When I woke up and, and saw an alarming number of notifications on my phone, I was like, oh my god, what? <laughs> what, what happened? I don't, I don't understand. What happened was the biggest day in the history of blessings in a backpack. 1,500 donations Sunday morning turned into 4,000 donations by Sunday afternoon. That literally turned into over 17,000 donations in two week period of time. Blessings in a backpack is based out of Louisville, where Jackson played his college ball. They provide food on the weekends for school-aged children across America who might otherwise go hungry. Two guys from Buffalo, New York, that knew nothing about blessings in a backpack, changed our organization for the better. 
To date, and the money is still coming in, Bill's fans have donated more than half a million dollars. It showed the true spirit of sportsmanship. They did this for their opponent. See you next season. After years of losing seasons, the Bills are now winners, just like their fans. Bills fans, I appreciate the sportsmanship, high character and class you displayed after the game. Thank you for the impact your donations have made. You're very deserving to be honored by the Musil Awards. And here to honor and thank Buffalo Bills fans for their overwhelming kindness, please welcome the CEO of Blessings in a Backpack, Aaron Kerr, and the organization's chief marketing officer, Nikki Grizzle. And accepting the Musial Award on behalf of the Bills fan base, Dan Konopsky and William Burke. You guys were overwhelmed just when we showed up in Buffalo. How do you feel tonight? <laughs> <laughs> overwhelmed again. Yeah. Um, you this, guys keep doing it. <laughs> this has been an incredible experience from the beginning to the end, which is here tonight. Well, I, I'm just wondering, do Bills fans do this all the time, where they raise money for a charity it's, for the <laughs> opponent? It's not the first time. We did it with Andy Dalton. We did it even at home with Josh Allen when his grandmother passed away. So what does that say about Buffalo Bills fans? City of, city of good people. <laughs> good neighbors. Good neighbors, it's yeah. It's in the blood. Me. Thank you all for being here, and congratulations. Enterprise salutes Mario Hofer for the extraordinary sportsmanship he showed Carter Steinlage. As a proud sponsor of the Musial Awards, Enterprise helped bring Mario and Carter together in St. Louis. We're both competitors, but we also know how to just share love to people who know how to play the game. Enterprise, celebrating the power of picking up others. Coming up, the LSU Tigers take an opponent under their wing. And later, a tip of the sportsmanship cap to baseball MVP Bryce Harper. Maryville University is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the Musial Awards. In these trying times, the values of civility, compassion, and sportsmanship are needed now more than ever. Stan the Man embodied those values, and Maryville is honored to stand by his legacy. So on behalf of one of the fastest growing universities in the nation, Maryville welcomes you to the Musial Awards, the greatest night in all of sport. Please welcome two-time Olympic gymnastics gold medalist and 2019 Stan Musial Lifetime Achievement Award recipient, Bart Conner. Yeah, it's so exciting to be back here at the Musial Awards. I feel like I do a cartwheel. Do it. It's one of my favorite nights of the year, so it's a great honor to be here and to present our next honorees. In collegiate gymnastics, a camaraderie exists like in few other sports. That couldn't have been more evident than in April at the NCAA Championships. Shea Campbell, a UCLA freshman at the time and rising star, qualified for the event as an individual. She was an athlete without a team because for the first time in 15 years, her Bruins failed to advance to the Nationals. But thanks to the sportsmanship of another storied program, Shea was made to feel right at home. If you look in the walls here, we've won seven national championships. We're the only program to have won over four different decades. <laughs> Regional championships for UCLA was, was tough. UCLA, unfortunately, will not be advancing to the NCAA championships this year. In that moment, it just felt like all of the work that we put in and all the things that we pushed through just kind of went down the drain. For a few of us to make it and not everyone was very hard, especially because it hasn't happened to us in years. 
The way it works in gymnastics is eight teams qualify to the NCAA championship and a number of individuals qualify as well, both in the all around and on each individual event. Shea got to qualify as an all arounder. Every other competition of the year, she competed with her team. And now all of a sudden, in the biggest competition of the year, she is by herself. It was my first nationals. I didn't have my team. It's like, okay, so how do, how do you make the most of it? How do you make the most of it? We found out that we were gonna have Shay as our individual maybe a week prior to nationals. So we wanted to welcome her like she was a part of our team. We all reached out to her before nationals and was like, you can come to us for anything. We're literally learning your floor routine, so we will be doing it on the side with you. It was LSU's intention to help from the bottom of their heart, Shay have a great experience. Yeah, Shay! It's hard going out to nationals, literally the biggest stage in NCAA gymnastics by yourself. Like you don't have a team to support you. You don't have a team behind you, but we wanted to let her know that that was us. Like we were her team for that night. And it was just an honor, like having her a part of our Tiger family for the night. I didn't really know what to do with myself, but they immediately ran up to me, literally ran up to me and gave me a hug. I mean, they played um, UCLA, the song UCLA for me. Shea Campbell is competing as an individual for a UCLA and she's rotating with the LSU team. I was kind of doing a little head snap and I, LSU was right there and I saw them like doing it with me. So like in that moment I was like, hey, okay, like I was doing the dance. The reality is she is their competitor and yet LSU opened their arms and hearts to her in a way that is just special. We're gonna accept her. We're going to let her into this group and we're gonna support her. That is exactly what we need across all sports, not just gymnastics. And that's the epitome of sportsmanship. Presenting the Museal Award, we're thrilled to have with us from Los Angeles, the Pac-12 Freshman of the Year, UCLA All-American, Shay Campbell. And representing the LSU gymnastics program to accept the Musial, Tigers head coach Jay Clark, NCAA vault champion Haley Bryant, and eight-time All-American Kaya Johnson. Now, Shay, when you were contacted by the Musial Awards, you didn't hesitate to say yes. Tell me how important this is to you. I felt so welcomed as a freshman going into my first NCAA championships, and I am forever grateful to the LSU team um, for welcoming me to their family and having a dance party with me. <laughs> yeah. Jay, you've coached uh, for over 30 years in the NCAA. And uh, you've coached many legendary teams and many national championships. What does this honor mean to you and to your program at LSU? I just think it's tremendous, um, a tremendous testament to the character of, of the young women that, that are in our sport in general. It was really cool to be a part of, and I got to sit back and watch it and, and enjoy it. Congratulations. Congratulations. Coming up, an enduring moment of sportsmanship from the Tokyo Olympics and a rebel whose cause is worthy of a museal. This CBS Sports Spectacular, the Museal Awards, is sponsored by Maryville University. Many connections, one you at maryville.edu. Enterprise, connecting you to all the places you love. And Lexus, experience amazing. Well, it may have been the Olympic spirit at work, or perhaps the athlete's sheer gratitude for the games taking place. Whatever it was, the Tokyo Olympics had its share of indelible sportsmanship moments. Among them, the jubilation of two high jumpers who decided to share a gold medal. The two men leading at the moment, Lutus Esabashim and Tamberi, tied for the gold. And he's over. Until the last jump, I wasn't considering the situation. And we didn't really realize until we got to that last jump and we look around and there's no one left except me and him. Oh, 
very close. Tambiri, 2.39 for a win. I missed the third attempt. And then the judge came to us. I think they have to discuss the jump off. And then he hit me directly at the same moment that the judge came. Continue with the jump off. I, I feel like there's something better here. And Mutat say, he stop him and he say, wait, can we have two goals? And that's, this is the sentence. Can we have two goals? It's possible. It's, it depends if you decide, History, if you They've agreed decide to share the goal medal. We just look at each other, two friends who can win the gold medal together. It never happened before. It's magical. One of the great enduring moments of sportsmanship for Tokyo 2020. It's an honor to be uh, awarded with this. Really, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate this. This award is very special because not just for the performance itself. I'm glad that this moment touched a lot of people's heart. Worldwide Technology presents more inspiring moments from the Museal Awards. In addition to celebrating this year's award recipients, the Museal Awards recognized its 2020 honorees. They missed out on the live show last year due to the pandemic, so the Museal Awards invited them to take the stage this year and get the ovation they deserve. Just with them and without all the support and the prayers I got from around the nation, I could not have done this, so I just want to thank them for all they've done and all they continue to do. Worldwide technology, make a new world happen. So we continue now with our 2021 honorees and a young cross-country runner whose selflessness and dedication embodies the spirit of the Musial Awards. Rebel Hayes excels at his sport, but often when he races, he has no shot at the awards podium and you won't even find his name among the results, but you will see him giving his time and effort to look out for someone else. Sometimes the winners of a race can't be timed with a stopwatch. That was certainly the case at the Mansfield Cross Country Invitational in Mansfield, Arkansas. Let's go, Paul! And somewhere in the massive turnout were two kids who stood out. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Paul Scott and Rebel Hayes always run the 3.1 miles side by side. Rebel is 12, Paul is 18 and blind. Go, 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 go! So Paul can't really see objects, you know, further than about, say, 20 feet away. Waited. He reads Braille. Uh, he does use a computer with a screen reader. Four, uh... He started running because his older siblings were on the cross country team. I liked it because um, I think it's important for people to take a break from hard things such as school. Paul can't see, but he did have a vision. He just needed a little help. If Nike makes baby shoes, Rebel probably had them. It seems he went straight from crawling to running. And he's been winning races since a school fundraiser when he was just four. Did you realize uh, pretty early on that you were pretty fast? Uh, people said I was. As much as he loves running, he loves a challenge even more. So when West Fork High School put out a call for guide runners, Rebel stepped up. At the time, he was in the second grade. And so he asked Coach Serber. Coach Serber had seen him run, you know, fun runs and stuff. And she was like, yeah, if you think he can. And so that's, that's how I got started. And Rebel and Paul have been tethered ever since. Using a guide rope, Rebel helps Paul navigate the course. He is Paul's eyes and always in his ear. Let's push up this over here. I have to talk most of the race, tell him if there's a ditch or push up the hill. I can hear people's footsteps and I can hear them breathing, so that's how I know I, sh I should pass them. Back right here, see this dotted line? No. Well, I know you don't, Paul, you're so funny. And the bond between these two that's developed over the past three years goes beyond the cross country course. You have a queen. We like to do magic tricks with cards and I like to test him on his Rubik's Cube skills. Someone's gravel, don't trip. 
running can teach us a lot about ourselves. Watch your step. Stamina, perseverance, and sometimes grace. You know, we're called in this life to love others and serve others and use our talents to fullest, and Rebel gives us a wonderful demonstration of that. The West Fork High Cross Country team finished first in Mansfield that day, showing all of us that when it comes to winning, it all comes down to who's by your side. Here to present the Musial Award to Rebel, please welcome Paul Scott and West Fork cross country coach Tiffany Server. And let's congratulate from West Fork, Arkansas, Rebel Hayes. What has Rebel meant to you? Um, he meant a lot to me. He showed uh, me how a young can person be to be useful. I think anyone can make differences in the world. Guys, thank you very much. Thanks for being here, and congratulations on the Musial Award. Coming up, the uplifting friendship between a college football player and a young fan. Welcome back to the 2021 Musial Awards, presented by Maryville University. All right, from one heartwarming story to another, we celebrate the decency and goodness of a college football player. In the most genuine way, Lavelle Dumont reminds us of the power we all have to uplift and inspire. Some people cross your path and change your direction. No one knows that better than 16-year-old Winter Nisley. Even though Winter is very outgoing, it's still hard for him to make friends. And making it even tougher, the family moved here to Toledo, Ohio, just before the world shut down. He'd become a pandemic prisoner of sorts. Winter was born with a severe congenital heart defect. He had the first of three open heart surgeries when he was just two weeks old. So because of the multiple surgeries so early on in his life, it caused a lot of developmental delays. Winter's heart may have had a defect, but it's always had plenty of space for love and for sports. Oh, chain switch, switch, go. He literally throws the football to himself. So he will throw it as far as he can in the side yard and he will run to catch it. And his game of one-man catch caught someone's eye. Last summer, I drove by and I was just like, oh, this kid's like, I could tell he was working hard. Oh, motion, motion, motion. Lavelle Dumont would drive by Winter's house on his way to school. And one day, he just decided to stop. I was surprised when Lavelle pulled up that day. Yeah. Cause that never happened. I, I would be out there all day, every day. No one would come up. Winter calls me and says, Mom, some guy just stopped and talked to me and I gave him my phone number. <laughs> and I said, um, you did what? I didn't think about it at the time, like random guy pulling up in a car, like trying to speak to him, like, oh, not the best look, not the best look. Go! But Lavelle was impressed with Winter's dedication. <sighs> And so he offered him some tickets to an upcoming University of Toledo game. That's where he plays football. Lavelle Dumont is a 6'4", 300-pound offensive lineman for the Rockets. I think he's a product of good parenting. I think it's a guy that really understands the value of work. That work was about to pay off. Time out on the field for an offensive injury. Until he broke his leg in the first game of last season. But hard times often reveal good character, and Lavelle used his time to get to know Winter. We back in the game now. They may seem like an odd couple, but now they're just good buddies. Come on, Lavelle. You showing out for the camera, man. Who give good grief. 
Lavelle actually goes out of his way to make time for winter. He comes over and picks him up, and they'll go play basketball, or they'll just talk. That's my buddy, man. That's my buddy. <laughs> I love winter. He's a brother to me. He's a friend to me. He's my family. When we were keeping our distance, they came together. Here's one college football player who lifted himself just by lifting someone else. Presenting our next Musial Award, it's great to have with us Winter Nisley. And from the University of Toledo, let's hear it for Lavelle Dumont. Well, I just want to know, you've seen what's happened here tonight, and you're getting a musical award. What does it mean to you? I don't even know how to put it into words. Uh, just having winter here, like, that's what really makes it special to me, because it's not just me in this, it's winter as well. And, like, I just want this to be, a, like, how do I put it, a light on what we can be as a whole for everybody. Like, this isn't just me and him. Everybody can do this. I think it is definitely a light. Congratulations, guys. Thank you, Lavelle. Thank you, Winner. Thanks for being here. The Lexus Lounge was the place to be as this year's Musial Award recipients came together to experience amazing. I said this is a lot more nerve-wracking than playing against like 50,000 at Notre Dame. I just loved um, helping people and I really wanted to help and run. And this is so surreal. I have been walking around like jaw open, like this is so amazing. You too can experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Coming up, Bryce Harper shows why he's a class act, and Spelling Bee champ Zayla Avangard wows us with her character and basketball talent. This CBS Sports Spectacular, the Musial Awards, is sponsored by Maryville University. Many connections, one you at maryville.edu. Edward Jones, life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. And worldwide technology, make a new world happen. Back in April, over at Bush Stadium, we witnessed a scary moment involving Bryce Harper of the Philadelphia Phillies. The star outfielder was hit in the face by a 97-mile-per-hour fastball from Cardinals pitcher Henesis Cabrera. But then he stood up to show he was okay and then showed why he's a stand-up guy. Bryce is unable to be with us tonight because he's attending a teammate's wedding in Hawaii. Lucky guy. But the meaning of the honor and the association with Stan the Man was not lost on him, and he offered us to sit down to talk about his gesture and the recognition, it gives us a chance to tip our cap to Bryce Harper for a display of remarkable sportsmanship. I'd faced him prior um, to that at bat, and I was sitting on a slider. Part of the lineup here. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, no. Oh, boy. It got me right in the, right in the cheek. Wow. A little scared, a little worried. You start thinking about uh, your family, you start thinking about your kids, things like that, uh, making sure you're gonna be okay. Face is still there, so <laughs> we're all good. I got Bryce's number and reached out to make sure he was okay and that we were thinking about him, praying for him. I really appreciated that text. I sent him a text as well about, uh, you know, Cabrera. He wanted to make sure that, that um, Cabrera was okay. Tell him to keep his head up, tell him to stay aggressive, tell him it's part of the game, tell him there's no hard feelings. I could see the, the distraught, I guess, facial expression on his face and how upset he was and how sad he was about you know, hitting somebody like that. I just wanted to make sure that he was okay. You know, there was no ill will towards him or anything like that. You try to be a great human being, you try to be the person you want to be. You know, I have an amazing family, I have amazing parents that, you know, tried to teach me the right ways and I try to I'm gonna try to do that you know with my kids as well so congratulations Bryce on a, um, just a heartfelt very sportsmanlike gesture to, to Hennessy to be able to 
be in the picture with Musial, um, somebody that was incredible um, on and off the field, the way he played the game, the way he went about it, just to be in that kind of light with him. Um, I'm definitely humbled. I'm definitely um, appreciative. The winner of this year's Scripps National Spelling Bee is the recipient of the Stan Musial Award for Extraordinary Character. Zaila Avant-Garde is a prolific speller, and she's got game, too, holding three basketball-related Guinness World Records. She caught our attention, and many others, back in July. With poise and charisma, she overcame the pressure and outlasted more than 200 other national qualifiers to be crowned the champion of the B. She made history, too, as the B's first black American winner. And throughout the competition, and in the spotlight ever since, She's exemplified graciousness, humility, and extraordinary character. I would say you're looking at top three, class of 2025, bar none. Definitely top point guard in her class. She can get to the rim at will. If you don't want to make her angry uh, at all, that, that's, avoid that, because she becomes very aggressive. She's not the typical 15-year-old, you know? Zayil had a propensity for reading and a strong memory as a very young age. For my 12th birthday, my grandmother caught me. She was like, so what do you want for your birthday? And so I'm like, I don't know. Uh, so I was like interested to in my regional spelling bee. My mother-in-law called me directly and she's like, Elma, she says she want to get into the spelling bee. Is there something else you think she wants? I was like, no, she's really excited about the spelling bee. Right from the get-go, I could tell that like there was something special, that she was like extremely talented. For the next year and a half or two years, she just worked her mind off. The finals itself, you began to see the rounds and the spellers go out after every round. And Zayel, if you remember, was on the front line uh, of the stage that evening, and you could see her rooting for her colleagues. You could see her giving high fives and helping them, and, and sometimes the anguish on her face when she knew that they had spelled a word wrong. By the way, she got into spelling and made it a priority just two years ago, which is remarkable what we're seeing. Maria, M-U-R-R-A-Y-A. That is correct! <laughs> Zaila is not only a spelling bee champion, but she's a champion for good. And very conscious of opening the doors that she has as the first black American champion of the Scripps National Spelling Bee. You know she was a first, right? But the one thing she's telling everyone is I should not be the last. I want to motivate girls to do whatever. I don't just want to be like, oh, you can spell. No, I want girls to look at me and say like, oh, I can do whatever I want. She's the epitome of you can do it. We're so happy to have her with us tonight from Harvey, Louisiana, the recipient of the 2021 Stan Musial Award for Extraordinary Character, Zayla Avant-Garde. So people are amazed that in two years you were able to decide to become a spelling champion and then become a spelling champion. Give us an idea of the work that went into it and why you decided to do it. So the work that went into it was pretty significant. I mean, I was, I was doing like 13,000 words a day at the height of it. Oh my goodness. Which I can't even count to 10 without forgetting a number. <laughs> so uh, that's a lot of words. So give us an idea of what's next for you. In the future, I want to play college basketball at Harvard, then go to the WNBA naturally, and then the list goes on. Yeah. Well. When, when some people say that, they might go, oh, okay, good for you. When you say it, we'll see you at Harvard. Well, we're gonna put you to work. Really? S yes, we're gonna put you to work. So, um, if you don't mind, Amanda, if you could come out, uh, we wanna see the skills, yeah. So, Zayla, you, you wouldn't mind showing some of your 
skills to the audience, would you? Neither. Okay. <laughs> so, if you see a bar coming towards you, dodge. That goes for you too. <laughs> How about that? Zayla, avant-garde. Coming up, we present the Museal Lifetime Achievement Award for Sportsmanship to Wayne and Janet Gretzky. Representing the Museal family, please welcome Stan's granddaughter. Lindsay Musial Sears. The Stan Musial Lifetime Achievement Award honors iconic sports figures who have exemplified sportsmanship in their lives and careers. And when it comes to hockey, Wayne Gretzky is objectively in a class by himself. He's a five-time winner of the Lady Bing Trophy, awarded to the NHL player who exhibits the best type of sportsmanship and gentlemanly conduct combined with a high standard of playing ability. No other living NHL player has won the award as many times. Janet Gretzky grew up in St. Louis, Pattonville High School for all you St. Louisans. <laughs> she enjoyed a successful acting and dancing career. Behind the scenes, she has made an impact in raising awareness and funds for several charities. It's so special that Wayne and Janet are sharing this honor because it reminds my family of the love and appreciation my grandparents had for each other. And together, Wayne and Janet have been similar models of kindness and graciousness. We are proud to recognize them with this year's Stan Musial Lifetime Achievement Award, the highest award for sportsmanship. Where do I begin? Wayne has won every award, uh, and, but this one's so fitting. It speaks to his ambassadorship to the game of hockey that started when he was nine years old, you know, in a small town in the middle of Ontario and Canada, and then carried on to Los Angeles and New York and St. Louis along the way. That legacy is living large in the country today. The players just gravitated to him. The more you're around him, you just saw how he could be so positive to people. Everything he did was infectious. His, his goal to be the best. They called it the trade of the century. Number 99, Wayne I have an enormous amount of respect for Wayne Gretzky and what he did here. The ripple effects of his arrival are still being felt. Janet and Wayne are such a great couple. Wayne can't be who he wants to be without Janet. She's done so much for charities. They didn't have to be seen, but they help so many people. Some athletes will come and take away from the game. He gave back. What he did for the sport, and he did it with such class and dignity, it's, um, it's a true tribute. Well, as Wayne and Janet uh, win this award, there's someone really looking down, and that's Walter Gretzky and Phyllis, uh, his mom. Uh, they'd be so proud because they wanted Wayne to be a great hockey player, but there's no question they wanted him to be a better person, and he certainly has become that. So we are honored to have the Musio family with us to present the Lifetime Achievement Award, including Stan's daughters, Jean Musial Edmonds, Janet Musial Schwarzy, and our thanks to the entire family for being here tonight. And now the recipients of the 2021 Stan Musial Lifetime Achievement Award for Sportsmanship, Wayne and Janet Gretzky. been seeing these stories I mean yeah, it's amazing you, you you know all about sportsmanship 
what, what has this night kind of uh, meant to you? What's, what's going through your mind? Um, I'm hoping the whole country can watch this on Christmas because it shows how great a country it really is. <laughs> there's so many, there's so many good people in the world. Um, Janet's mom, who's 100 years old, who's with us. And my dad, who unfortunately just passed away. The Canadian Institute for the Blind is my hometown of Brantford to see that young man running with that boy. Right. And the whole, every story has been so special and so unique, and we need more of this in our life right now. We do. But I, wa I want to say congratulations to all the honorees tonight. Your stories have been remarkable and touched our yeah. hearts. But, but you guys, part of your makeup is giving back, and that's what you've been doing. And we mentioned in the piece about about your mom and dad yeah. and how they established that and they wanted you to be a good person, even above a good yeah. hockey player. Talk well, a little bit about that. My dad always said my life was mapped out for me. And my dad told me at a young age, for some reason the good Lord gave you a passion to love hockey. And I, I know you're gonna be okay in hockey, but I want you to make sure you understand there's, there's more to life than just the game of hockey. And so I learned from my parents. And Janet, I know Getting funding for breast cancer research is really important to you. It is, it is. Um, unfortunately, I've, uh, cancer's been a big part of our family, and I know it's probably touched every single person here and all around the world, and it's really important to raise awareness and research and everything, um, NBCC, um, National Breast Cancer Coalition, is a big, is a big charity for me. Can I, can I just say this on behalf of Jenna and I? First of all, we're really um, so uh, overwhelmed on this event. This is what makes our city of St. Louis, the country, North America so wonderful. And I was saying, you know, there's only, I, I wish we did this in Canada, and there's only one person that we could do this after in our country. And if they flipped that number over or made it a number nine, the Gordy Howe Awards in Canada, it'd be really cool. Special night. The Stan Musial Award for Extraordinary Character and the Lifetime Achievement Award for Sportsmanship are presented thanks to the generosity of Edward Jones. Here they are, the winners of the 2020 and 2021 Musial Awards. And there you have it. On behalf of the St. Louis Sports Commission and the National Sportsmanship Foundation, thank you for joining us for the Musial Awards presented by Maryville University. So long from the Stiefel Theater in St. Louis.